Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the Furby Dark Max 220mm quadcopter. This is the FR Sky version. Inside the box we get in two sets of Gemfan 51-52 flash propellers, the quadcopter and the bag of accessories which contains two velcros for the battery, nuts and screws for the motors, an 8mm wrench, a linear RPSMA FPV antenna and this connector which allows you to connect your own receiver. Now let's take a look at the most interesting thing which is the quadcopter. As you can see it's all black. On the front it features this CCD FPV camera which is great and it was used also on the Furby X215. It's also being sold as the Ishin C800T. As you can see it has a built-in OSD controller and it can also switch between NTC and PAL inside the settings. The motors are SR2205 2550KV motors which are capable of running 6S LiPo battery. Unfortunately I don't have a 6 cells battery to test it with but it can be very interesting to fly this quadcopter with a 6S battery. I'm going to test it with a 4S and in a couple of days I'm also going to release a 5S flight video with this quadcopter. On the center we can find a flight tower from AR Tower. On the bottom we can find a 4-in-1 ESC controller. This is the 30 ampere BLLES ESC controller. On the top we have an F4 flight controller with an integrated VTX. You can select the output power between 25, 100 and 200 milliwatts. You can see that they really put attention into details and the solder points and the entire build quality is very impressive. The thickness of the bottom plate is 4 millimeters, and although it has an integrated plate which means if you're going to break an arm you're going to need to replace the entire frame, I think you're going to need to crush it pretty hard in order to break it. The weight of the quadcopter without the propellers on is 262.5 grams, so it's much lighter than the Furby X215 which weighs 338 grams with the propellers, so the Dark Max is probably around 70 grams lighter than the Furby X215, so it's significantly lighter. If you've got the FR Sky version, in order to bind to your Taranis, you're going to need to put your Taranis on D8 mode, channels 1 to 8, then hit the bind. And before connecting the battery to the quadcopter, don't forget to put the antenna on, otherwise you might risk burning your transmitter and then you are going to need to change the VTX. So make sure to put first the antenna on, make sure that it's well secured. You can see that this one is a little bit loose, so I will have to tighten it up, but for now it's going to be okay. So then hit bind, you're going to hear the beepings. Then you need to connect a battery while holding the button over here. It might be easier if someone can help you, but it can be done also with one hand. Then you can release the button, you can press exit, and if everything went well, now the receiver was bound to the transmitter. In order to check it, you can see that when it's connected, this LED indicator is solid and if I'm going to turn off my Taranis, you can see now it's going to start blinking. It means that the signal was lost. Setting up the VTX is done using these two buttons over here. The one next to the channel is of course used to change the channel. Short pressing it is going to change between the channels. You can see the indicator on the top that is changing. It starts from 1 on the bottom left, then it goes all the way to 8. If you want to change this channel, we need to long press it. We can see that the blue indicator is going to change. So it starts from A, then it moves to B, C, D, E, and all the way to F. So it means we have six bands, eight channels. So in total, we have 48 channels. In order to change the output strength of this transmitter, you have to short press this power button. When no LED indicators are present, it means that now it's on 25 milliwatts. When you press it once, the middle one is going to turn on, which means right now it's on 100 milliwatts. And when the right one turns on, it means that right now the output strength is 200 milliwatts. 
In case you would like to mount an HD camera, it has already a 30 degrees stand. If you have a mount that already has an angle, it's going to be a little bit difficult for you to mount it because if you mount it like that, the angle is going to be too high. And if you mount it like that, it's going to be parallel. So maybe you can mount it like that. Or preferably you can get a case which is similar to the one that was included with the X215 that doesn't have any angle and then you can just mount it like that and you're not going to have any issues. By the way, if you have a Legend 3 or a Runcom 2, it's going to be very hard for you to fit the camera. So it's designed mainly to carry Runcom 3, Go Procession or the Foxeer box. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go through the configuration in Betaflight, then put the propellers on, take it for a test flight. And in my test flight, I'm going to use the directional antenna and also the omnidirectional antenna to see what is the difference. Who knows, maybe this one is going to be enough for you. We'll find out. So unfortunately I have some radio related issues and I think this receiver is not performing well so what I'm going to do I'm going to replace it with an X4R receiver and this one is also going to give me an RSI feedback which this one doesn't have so hopefully it's going to solve the problem and then I'm going to head back to the field and test it again. Like a star on the sky I'm okay I wanna take a breath I'm falling in love I'm falling in love I wanna have your hand Don't leave me alone Don't leave me alone You make me high Oh yeah You got my sight Baby
So after taking it for a second test flight with the replaced receiver, I can tell you that this is the best ready to fly quadcopter that you can get for less than $200 and it flies just great out of the box after changing the receiver because the included receiver, at least in my experience, was pretty useless because I had some range issues and I lost signal even after less than 100 meters. So I recommend to you if you have an Afro Sky receiver to get the plug and play version and just add your receiver and XSR, XOR. In addition, even flying it with this linear antenna, the FPV range that I got was about 200 meters. And with the omnidirection one, I got about 500 meters or so. The problems I had when I reached 500 were more related to the receiver than to the FPV. Because as you could see in the video, the video was very clear. So unlike the Furby X215, which had range issues, and I replaced the VTX and still had some problems. This VTX just worked great out of the box and this is really impressive. Besides that, regarding the battery Velcro, I'm not sure if they intend to use it for a battery or to just to mount the FAB camera, but don't use it for a battery because it's not just not going to hold. So buy some battery straps. Just make sure they are narrow because not all the battery straps are going to fit. This one fits great. And I recommend to put a sticky pad on the bottom. That will help to hold the battery in place because otherwise it can move. This one made sure it stayed in place and I didn't have any problems with battery falling off the quadcopters or something like that. So if you're a beginner, I recommend to start flying this quadcopter with a 3S battery. I think you will have plenty of power and after that you can buy a 4S, 5S and even 6S battery to fly it with. I still haven't tested it with 5S. My 5S battery should arrive any day now and then I will post a test flight using this battery. Probably is going to perform very well from videos that I've seen. So again, thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about this quadcopter, feel free to ask it in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you on my next videos. Goodbye.